G'day guys, Nick and Jack here from The Unaffected. Coming up, we talk with Millie Boyle about the challenges of having a sibling with Down syndrome, such as her sister's year of silence. We also gain insight into how Hannah has helped to shape Millie's amazing perspective and her passion for mental health advocacy. G'day and welcome. You're listening to The Unaffected, the podcast where we share the stories of those with a loved one with a disability condition or illness, and we show how they're affected. My name is Nick, and with me as always is Jack, and we are brought to you by Australia's best boutique care agency, Care Match Australia. Check out their socials on Facebook and Instagram for all your caring needs. Our guest today is Millie Boyle. Millie is 23 years old and currently an NRL player with the Brisbane Broncos. She was born on the New South Wales South Coast and moved up to the Gold Coast to play rugby union. Uh, Initially, now playing rugby league with Burley Bears and Brisbane Broncos in the women's NRL competition. Millie grew up with her sister, Henna, who's now 19 and is the sassiest of all her siblings. And Henna also has Down syndrome. Millie volunteers in the disability space, running social outings for young people with disabilities with her friend's organisation called Stellar Experiences. Millie is also an advocate for mental health awareness for young people with disabilities. Welcome, Millie. All right, Millie, thanks for coming on and having a chat with us. Um, So first off, tell us a little bit about Hannah and what your upbringing was like. Yeah, so Hannah is my little sister. I'm one of five children and I have an older brother and three little sisters. Hannah's the second youngest. Um, Hannah has Down syndrome. She's 19 years old now and she is very sassy, very uh, independent, loves her family and loves mashed potato and gravy (laughs) (laughs) and peanut butter. (laughs) Do you remember growing up when you first comprehended that Hannah had a disability? Yeah, I mean... And not at the start. I remember um, quite clearly I was four years old. Um, obviously, I remember mum being pregnant and um, I remember she went and had henna at the hospital and we couldn't see her for a while and that was really confusing for us because we were just so excited. And um, I remember finally getting to visit her at the hospital um, and we were just so stoked and we were just like, yeah, how good's this? And... Um, it it was still a little while until she could come home, obviously not really knowing why, but I just thought that was how it happened with all babies. Little did I know she was in intensive care, like getting heaps of treatment and whatnot. But, um, I remember coming home one day and she was finally home and dad's like, mum's home with henna. And, um, I remember mum was on the lounge holding Hannah when we walked in and mum was just crying. Like my mum was 27 years old at this point. So like her fourth child, 27. And um, I remember walking in and mum was just crying and I'm like, well, mum, what are you crying for? I've got a new little sister. <laughs> like I was just so stoked and I just – so that obviously never – nothing ever really ticked to me. Um, as we are getting older, I mean, you know, you start to get like what – six, seven, and people start to realise that she's a little bit different or it was more so like people would look at her in the street or like little kids would look at her when they would walk past and she just looks at them like, mm, you're weird. Like, we're just like, mm, yeah, you're weird. Like, we didn't really notice anything um, that different. But, yeah, I mean, I can't really pinpoint a realisation. We always got told she had Down syndrome but I'm like, cool, like, my hair's brown. Like, yeah, what what's the that? difference? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So I think that's really special. But also coming from a really small town, there's not really many other people that have disabilities either. So that's like, I don't know. I guess I, I didn't really have anything to compare to yeah. until I like went on with like schooling and, and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I've, I was probably like maybe eight or seven or eight when I found out that. Yeah, when I realised. When you realised, yeah. yeah, there was a bit of a difference. Yeah. Do you, do you remember, like, that having an impact on you at all? Or well, I guess it was, it was something that you just knew that was normal to you? You grew up with it? Yeah, I mean, it was just, like, she wasn't, Hannah wasn't treated any differently to any of us. And um, she was always, like, a lot calmer and 
like easy going than all of us so it was like <laughs> there, there was something different there we were like okay why is she so chill like <laughs> we don't even notice she's in the car like we're all like ah, i want to do this i want to get this and she was just always very calm and chill um but in terms of like her having i remember she used to like crawl differently she used to like sit with her feet like her legs right open and like she couldn't crawl, so she'd, like, scoot everywhere on the ground and use her, like, bum and legs to get around. So, And her tongue was always out because her tongue was quite, quite large for her mouth. So her tongue was always out and like, it was, like, always sticking out. So it's, like, little things you pick up on there, but, yeah. At it the did, time it was just At the time it was just, yeah, yeah, my sister. And at seven or eight, did your mum or dad at that point have a conversation about what Down syndrome was or was there a conversation before then? Um, I remember. I remember we got sent this magnet in the um, mail and it was really random. I don't know how – I don't even know if we got sent it in the mail, but I remember this magnet and it was like, keep calm, it's only an extra chromosome. And I'm like, what even does that mean? I don't understand who sent us this magnet. I think it's still on the fridge. Like, it's pretty okay, funny. Yeah, yeah. Then we got told, you know, Hannah has an extra chromosome and that's why – that's what Down syndrome is and – Still, like to this day, I'm like, I still don't even really know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's, that's what I was gonna say. It's I was like, like, what I, is it? Like, they, like yeah. she, she, re- she looked really similar to other people, and that freaked her out. Like, she'd see another Down syndrome person and be like, whoa, <laughs> that person looks like me. <laughs> so, we always thought it was really funny, and we're like, Henna, who's this? Like, in the mirror. <laughs> yeah, because that's what I was gonna say. Like, I don't really know much about Down syndrome at all, but is there different, like, sort of functioning levels of it? Yeah, there's definitely yeah. definitely different, um, like a spectrum. Yeah, 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 and like your your levels of how, like if you're moderate or high functioning or low functioning, or um, you, whether you're verbal or like I've met some, like Hannah's verbal, but she's not like crazy out there. She used to be, but she's gone through like a few different things, and now she doesn't talk as much. But then I'll meet other Down syndrome people and particularly girls and guys but particularly girls and they are so out there like they're like oh my god yeah and i'm texting this boy on my phone <laughs> and then like he like replied to my message on instagram and i'm like whoa what? and it doesn't even know what any of that is like yeah. there's definitely different levels and like your capacity is a lot different um but in saying that then it's it can be such a big thing because then they can know they've got a disability like they know they've got a disability and um. they know they're different and it's like Down syndrome, something you can't hide, yeah. um, and oh, there's like good and bad to all disabilities. But like Hannah, she has Down syndrome. She she doesn't know. She doesn't know she has Down syndrome. She doesn't care. She doesn't know. Like she just worries about the simple things in life. Whereas like if you did know and that defined you, like mm. yeah. you can't escape that kind yeah. of thing. Whereas they're like it. so mentally capable and they're so with it, but they're like they'll always just be that kind of stereotype disability person. And I've seen that and it absolutely breaks my heart. And I'm like, wow, what would you rather like? Yeah. It's so crazy. Yeah. But yeah, pretty, it's, it's sad. It's very, uh, it's very confronting um, seeing it from that side because we've never had it from that side. So you said Hannah went sort of up and down and isn't as verbal. Can it be progressive at all like that? Or how does that? Mm, yeah. It, or it just, just something depends that she's on, done? Or? Yeah, it depends on your... I mean, your upbringing and stuff. Hannah was really loud and really out there and would always, like, joke around and sing songs and whatever. But um, just throughout her life and throughout our, our whole family's life, just going through different things and my parents breaking up and people leaving home and that kind of thing, it really had a big impact on her and she didn't really know how to control a lot of the things around her or speak about it very well so her way of adapting to that and to control what she could was just to like completely shut off which was um really really hard for our family at the time and um looking back on it is it was horrible just like seeing what she went through and we had no idea because she couldn't explain it so yeah she's definitely a lot better now and she's coming out the other side of it which is great but it's just sad to see that there were there's really nothing you can really do like for someone who doesn't know what to do and she doesn't know what's going on. So that was really confronting for all of us and for her obviously as well. Yeah. It's not just like, oh, yeah, what's wrong? Tell us. Like yeah, she doesn't yeah. even know what's going on but she just has all this 
feeling an emotion that she can't control. So yeah, and you'd see yes. her going through it and want to help. Yeah, her it was like over a year she yeah. didn't even speak or oh, like yeah. make a noise. Like yeah, it was. Wow. I remember oh, we actually kind of used to like see how far we could push it, and we'd like <laughs> start waxing her monobrow, and she hated that. Like, but she wouldn't even make a noise. So we're like, oh, you're out, something's up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's impressive. With those life events, like your parents separating, do you have? Did you have a conversation? with Hannah about that and it, trying to and like and explain what's happening mm, yeah I mean my dad actually had um a really bad accident and then he was in ICU he had a brain injury um so that was like a really long process and he was in hospital for ages and forgot us all and it was crazy it was like everyone just kind of got put to not the back but it was like that wasn't really a priority. It was just like, all right, sweet, let's sort dad out. Let's get dad fixed up. Um, and then it just the longer it kind of went on, like that probably had a really big impact on Hannah because it had such a big impact on us, but we could talk about it and we knew, like Hannah was only, how old if she been? Like eight years old when dad had his accident. So I think that was like a big crucial time for her to um, not have like her her normal support system around and that's probably when it started to kind of go down a little bit and then when she like got into high school and things like that we definitely always told her what was going on but like how much she really took on we don't really know um but yeah it was really upsetting obviously just see you've seen it right at the end but when you see everything that went into that to make her feel like that it's really yeah yeah Yeah. especially not only being able to express yourself and have a conversation about it and gain a level of understanding i suppose he's all had sports and outlets to deal with that whereas hannah i suppose was not only not able to have that conversation and and deal with that but constantly wondering like things are different what's going on yeah yeah absolutely you think of any teenage girl or teenage boy that's going through like all of the problems that we go through and we talk to our friends about it and you talk to your sisters or your brothers or whatever it is and your mum and your dad, but she just didn't really have that. And obviously coming from such a small town as well, like it was just not really – she was just a part of us. It wasn't like she could really be – Much more of a community. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like she didn't have that support system around her that we probably had. Even though we were her support system, it was like, yeah. that's just, I mean, moving up here. So she's up here now. My mum moved up here a couple of years ago and it's awesome. Like she has so many friends and she does so many things on the weekends and gets to see people. And she's like, we went to the um, this thing the other day. Um, I took them to Holy Moly and we all went to Holy Moly oh, yeah. and she fully has like a boyfriend now. I don't know oh, really? say that. <laughs> but she's like, yeah, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> easy <Okay>. yeah <laughs> but no it's so good to see like how different her life can be because of the resources and the um just more people and things that are available rather than living in a small so, town. so secluded yeah. yeah i had the exact same situation mm. down in albury and like yeah all well, the people they're like my family their friends and that are all there but just small town, the facilities there, everything's mm. not as accessible. And is that when you moved up here? Yeah, I came yeah. up here to the Gold Coast and went to like making strides with yeah, therapy right. and just more stuff around to, to yeah. do and, yeah. Just lifestyle as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Makes a big difference. And the people around you are happier and yeah, want to yeah. hang out more and, and help more, which is Yeah, which 100%. Is nice. Yeah. Growing up, did you realise a difference between your friends' families and, and your family or to to you was – their siblings, their sibling, and Hannah was just your sibling as well. Yeah, it was never really like, oh, we've got somebody who's got a disability. Like, it was always just like, that was like, bonus points, we've got Hannah. Like, she <laughs> she would always, um, I remember, we'd give her like, she's smart, like, she's really smart. She'd play, she knew something was different, but she knew she could get away with more things. Um, so we'd give her like 20 cents and then she'd go to the canteen at the footy and go and get like two buckets of chips. I'm like, yeah, how good, Hannah. <laughs> like uh-huh. she'd come back with it. She knew very well that like 20 cents gets you nothing. Knew what she was doing. Yeah. yeah. So I guess we kind of used it and then like our friends were like, that's so cool. Like <laughs> my sisters can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was never really like, it was never a, a, a 
negative thing or, or a bad thing. We were always like so lucky that we had someone like Hannah um, because she really did just see like this beautiful, simple things in life and just take them for what they were. And I think we tend to overcomplicate things a lot um, and overstress things a lot, but just having her always keeps you really grounded and um, growing up, like I always remember thinking that as well. Does Hannah play sport at all? Do they have sport? Um, she played sport like growing up. She does yeah. her there. Um, she goes to Combined Wellness Centre and does some exercise right. and does swimming. She's actually really good at swimming. Yeah, okay. Um, she's got a nice like very buoyant on the water, which is good. Yeah. <laughs> and um, she's always grown up swimming with us um, in Cabago and yeah. just, like – in your normal swim squad um, and she's always really enjoyed that. So she still does that now. But um, in terms of team sports, she's a little bit slower and like yeah, not yeah. as involved, but that's kind of more her choice. She's like not really like doesn't really have that like competitiveness like us. Yeah. She just, you know, wanted to be there for the fun or the social side of it. But um, yeah, there wasn't too there's, – there's definitely more now um, – like all abilities where they get involved and um especially with your family sort of or especially your sporting background does it frustrate you sort of trying to get her involved in things especially like you touched on coming from that small town yeah was it tough or um i guess it's always just been what's available and i think it's definitely improving now and i am such a big advocate for trying to get people of all abilities playing sport whether it's mixed whether it's um physical whether it's intellectual like just to get that um like we all love sport we all love watching sport we've all grown up with it so it's like everyone should be able to be involved at some capacity and play if they want to play um and there's definitely a lot more of it now and um i do a little bit of stuff with the titans um all abilities league and it's the best ever like they just get down there and it's like yeah the titans boys are here like it's just really good fun and everyone just loves it and they get to play before the boys sometimes at sea bus so that kind of stuff is just like fills your cup it's awesome um and hannah just gets involved where she can like but she's not really too fussed on it like if she really wanted to do it we would definitely push her more into it but she's more like that social side of it. Yeah, just goes to the <laughs> she, parties. Yeah, yeah. yeah, she loves coming and watching um, me and my brother play and things like that. So she loves sitting in the stand and she loves us a bit extra on those days. Like, oh hey, yeah, <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. Do any of your siblings still live at home? With is Hannah living at home with your mum? Yeah, Hannah lives at home with mum, um, and then my youngest sister Stella. So she's fourteen and. Oh, she's nearly 15 and Hannah's 19. And, yeah, I guess that's a – it's a big thing. We've all left home so we, like, we've all done our own thing and whatever, but we've all, all been the older sister or the older sibling of Hannah. So I think that's been really different for my little sister, Stella, who's almost the little but older sister who's had to, like, grow up with her and then – look after her as well and it's like that's my big sister and then Hannah can get very stuck in her ways and be a bit um, stubborn and (laughs) Stella gets really annoyed and I I really I do I do like feel sorry for Stella in that regards that she hasn't had the same upbringing that we have because she's younger and it's everything's just so different now to when we were growing up Um, but she's definitely such a beautiful girl and she's matured so much um, from having that and she'll learn so much and be so grateful for Hannah's stubbornness um, in a few years when she realises what it's done for her. So That's one thing I've noticed, I think, with when I meet people that have like family members with disabilities, some are also much more mature than other people, I think. And we spoke with Toby and Ella, Cornelius, and one of the other podcasts, their mum has MS. Mm. And, yeah, they spoke about the same thing, the way it sort of just helped them grow up quicker and sort of, yeah, showed them... I guess, yeah, just that being immature is not – there's no time for it. Yeah. When you've got someone with a disability around, you've got to grow up and do what's needed to be done. I think it gives them a really good perspective to yeah. what's actually important. Exactly, yeah. You really – and you can really – it helps you define who the good people in life are as well. Like it, it really just puts you on a path quicker than like doing this. You just get straight there 
from finding out those people and what they're like and how they act around people with disabilities or whether it's just how involved they are or just how considerate they are. I think it really shapes you to who you are and you'll definitely pick up on people that are going through something similar to you are or have been through something like that as well. So it's almost like, I don't know, it's like you feel blessed to grow up like that and be um, like-minded to those other people that are going through that as well. Yeah, it yeah. definitely teach you how to be more accepting and understanding, not yeah. only of people with disabilities, but these days the world's so segregated by yeah. religion and race I and know. belief. So yeah. growing up with that kind of thing would yeah, be a good lesson that these small differences don't actually make us exactly different exactly. as people. So. Like I said, you just seriously enjoy the simple things. Um, so much more I think and the big things don't really matter yeah was it hard for you and your siblings moving out of home did um, you feel like you were leaving Hannah behind or I found when my brother left um that had a big impact on Hannah so my older brother Morgan um because he was kind of like I know the big brother and like the male of the house and my dad was still there but <laughs> That were that my mum and dad were going through a lot at the time, so that had a big impact on Hannah. Um, um, she still actually carries around. This is so sad. Um, this like photo frame of Morgan. He's still alive. Like <laughs> <laughs> he lives in Sydney, <laughs> and she like if she's going somewhere overnight, she'll like put it in her bag and her suitcase, and then like take it with her. And I'm like, whoa, dramatic. <laughs> Where's my photo frame? <laughs> but um, no. I remember, yeah, when I left home, um, I mean, it's just something you do, especially from a, like a small town. You just want to move, kind of go straight away just to see what the world has to offer. And um, it was sad and I did really miss her, but it also made me really appreciate when I got to see her as well. And then we just start annoying her and then like three minutes in, she's like, oh, you're so annoying. Stop it. Go away now. <laughs> go back. Go away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's been the most challenging thing for you growing up with a sister with Down syndrome? It's a tough one. Um, I haven't, like, personally seen many challenges to it because I've only kind of always tried to see the positive out of it. And, I mean, just apart from her going through, like, that period where she didn't talk and, like, I think the, the biggest, the hardest part would be not knowing fully how to understand her at times when she doesn't know what to understand or what's going on, um, just not being able to like have a proper conversation with her to be like, tell just tell us what's wrong or tell us how you're feeling or what happened today. Like she just wouldn't open up and that was really um, – it just took a big toll on us. So that was probably the biggest thing but, yeah, I mean – I guess it's with having Down syndrome as well. Like it's like I said before, it can be a good and a bad thing, but it's always kind of helped Hannah in a way or us in a way, not Hannah, but like say if we're all out together or whatever and we're a little bit slower or Hannah take drops something or, you know, whatever it is, like people can see that she's got a disability and that they are very forgiving and it's like that's okay, like they're – almost kind about it because they are a little bit like, oh, I don't know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of like we just like, yeah, use the Down syndrome girl to like get yeah. out of something or if we haven't, if we've like tried to like, you know. Milk for everything it it's worth. Milk, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, it's like, yeah, no, stop crying. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not to that extent. But yeah. like it's – she's got a disability and that's very like physical. You can see that. And – this isn't obviously about henna, but I think having seen that other side of disability um, and seeing things like autism um, where it can be hidden but it can also be, like, very much there but people just aren't as aware yeah. of it. And so, like, say her friends might have autism but, like, they'll, we'll all be out together and they'll be considerate to henna but they won't be to them and it's like that invi- invisible right disability. Mm-hmm. And it's oh, worse because they actually know what's – what they're doing and what's going on and Hannah's just like, I don't know, like I have no idea. Yeah. And that's probably been a big thing. Like it's been really hard for me to accept um, whether it's just people that I know 
with autism or whether it's her friends with autism or people in the community and I've just seeing people treat them differently like that. Um, I've always thought that was – I mean, it's hard. It's a massive education thing but yeah. people just don't know and that breaks my heart. Yeah. You know, when they treat them differently and they're both, you know, they should both be treated the same. I think that's a massive perspective thing as well. Like it would be easy to sit there and go, you know, it was hard having a sister. Like I wanted to play with her and I couldn't and it was hard doing this and that. But to just say sort of like, yeah, cop it on the chin almost and just say, you know, she's still my sister. It was nothing different. It's, yeah, like that perspective thing we always speak about just shows that what some people might consider a problem in the world really yeah. isn't. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's always people going through something so much worse. Like mm. if you have that. Some people don't like looking at it like that, but if you have that mindset, like, okay, well then, what I've got is good. So, just find the yeah. positive in the find the positive in what you've got. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's not about it's not comparing. It's not about comparing or anything like that. Yeah. It's yeah. just like, well, all right, well, this we've got this, we've been dealt with this, but it could have been this. If yeah. It's not so like. Or yeah. I've still got this. Yeah, and exactly. We can still do this. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think as well. the term toxic positivity. The other day, and apparently, there's a thing now you can be <laughs> too, positive. too positive, too positive, too positive. Yeah, it's right. toxic. So, we've got to be yeah. careful. Right. <laughs> I know one of the um best bits of advice I was given in rehab was, uh, was let yourself have the bad days because without it, you can't have the good days. Yeah, it's yeah. like let yourself have those bad times, just don't let them drag on, turn into mm, weeks or whatever. Exactly. So, sometimes it's so you know, true. you can't just be up all the time, exactly. You if, can't even if it be. is a small, even if it is a small problem, you still, you know, let it get you down, deal with it. And then yeah, go right out, move on, and yeah, onto the 100%, next thing. 100%. It's so yeah. true. And you would seem fake if you were just like, I'm happy all the time, yeah. 24 7. Yeah. Like, yeah. You can't be. No one can like, be. Shut up, no, you're not. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You're like, I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, exactly. It's like we all go through those hard times, but it's like, sweet, cry about it, and then yeah. get on with it. On yeah. Next. Yep. So true. You seem pretty understanding of other people's lack of understanding at times and um, people maybe staring and stuff. Have there been any times where you've got really defensive about Hannah? Uh, like, honestly, not really much. That Not really anything that I can remember because we've just always had her back, like, yeah. all the time. And I think a big part of that was um, when we were in high school, like, we were from the Bega Valley, so it's, like, a lot of school little towns would come like to that school down on the far south coast of New South Wales and um like Jason and Will went there as well and like it was just such a beautiful school. It was a public school and we just had people like from every diverse background and ability and religion and race. Like it was just so diverse um that it was so inclusive I feel. We had a really good um, welfare officer who was, um, had such a big impact on our special education unit, I guess you could say, um, and they were always really integrated into like mainstream like play in, in school. So that was such a big part of our upbringing and our school life as well. I'm probably going off on a tangent, but I think that it's so detrimental in those years that if someone's coming into year seven um, and they haven't been exposed to people with disabilities, that they, it's fair to say, like at Bega High, they definitely understood what it was like to accept everyone and be understanding. And if they were ever picking on anyone, like a senior would come up and be like, oi, that's not on and like just rough them up a bit. <laughs> and then they knew from that day dot, like they had a responsibility that if there was another younger kid that would do that, they would do it. Carry it they on. would carry that on. Yeah. And I think that's just so important to, um, to have and to experience if you haven't been, because like let's be real, if you haven't been exposed to people with disabilities, like yeah. you're not really going to know how to treat them, whether, not that you have to treat them differently, yeah. but do you know what I mean? It's kind That's, of just that like mm. that backfall, like you're just going to go into that. It's one oh, thing we've, we've spoken about it on here before that, um, yeah, like I, I, I've said that I didn't know anyone with a disability growing up or really and that's why people, you know, say something or treat me differently or whatever it might be. I don't really blame them because they might be the same. But yeah. Otto, did you have many people at school with you like growing up that had – I know you, your sister, but other um, than that? Yeah, we did. I can 
the school. I went to had maybe a thousand kids, so we had yeah. quite a, a big special um, needs unit. So we had a fair bit of exposure, but I think still just lack of understanding. Like mistreatment mm. and prejudice often comes from just a lack of understanding. Lack of understanding. Yeah, especially and in those young years, like when yeah, you just don't yeah. Know. And yeah. if they have never been around that, or they don't have a cousin that, or a friend, or their parents haven't told them, like. You know, it's not like it's on TV or it's not like it's been put in that good light, I yeah. guess. And I think it's definitely changing. But Yeah, yeah. a lot more these days, which yeah. is, yeah, good. But yeah, especially back then there wasn't much. Yeah. Yeah, you can't blame people for just not knowing what to do. Yeah. Yeah, our school was pretty similar. There was um, a guy two years older than me, Tim Hosey, who had Down syndrome and he was like a celebrity around the school. <laughs> Mitch Orbison was two years above me at school and... Tim was always sitting with them at lunchtime and people knew, like, yeah, you don't. He's a cool guy. Oh, he was a cool guy. And the young kids got pulled into one pretty quickly if they ever yeah. pointed or, or did anything. So, yeah, I think yeah. education and just in, when the younger kids especially look up and see the older people being really inclusive and, and treating these yeah. individuals the same, then they learn from that. Yeah, and so, it becomes cool and it's like oh, they can respect that. And yeah. That's the biggest thing you can take from it. It's like being a good role model and just being a good person and people are looking at that and be like, oh, sweet, that's how it is. Like, Yeah. I remember having one guy at one of the schools I went to who was in a wheelchair and shout out to Ollie if you're listening, I'm sure you are, um, that I – it was a new school I was at so I was like wasn't good mates and hadn't been for a long time but the ones that had been – Remember one lunchtime, took the wheels off his wheelchair and like <laughs> left him sort of on the ground, like ran away, like as a joke. <laughs> Apparently, like oh I was God, like, Holy shit, Ollie. You, I was like, you can't do that. Like, what is going on? <laughs> but they were like, oh no, it's apparently just like a this joke. This happens were, every Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like they went and got him back after not long and put it back on. They were laughing about it. And I was like, yeah. what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> That's the best when you can yeah. when you can see the funny side of it and like people are comfortable enough to to take the piss out of someone or, you know, just have a laugh. Like that's when it's funny and that's the yeah. good part about it. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. The shit my mates say to me now. It's yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> but they wouldn't have dared said. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. You know, it's been a laugh. They can laugh about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cry yourself to sleep. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just doubling back quickly to how you were talking about the one advantage or well, not advantage, but one of the things that makes it, easier with people with down syndrome is it visible you can you can see and um that helps people's understanding and empathy because a frustrating story for me is my sister has cystic fibrosis and it got quite bad there before she started a a new treatment um to the point where she could only walk maybe 100 meters at a time before getting breathless and she doesn't have a disability sticker yeah. in her window because she can't get it for cystic fibrosis. Well done, government. <laughs> but so sometimes, <laughs> if, yeah, if she was having a, a bad day at the shops and she would try and park in a non-accessible park, but if yeah. the nearest park was 200 metres yeah, right at the back, she would it. just risk it and park in a, in a disabled park. And mm. some of the comments and looks and stuff that she yeah. has gotten over time, and I've never been there, luckily. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> But when yeah. she tells me about it, she's someone who um, experiences a lot of anxiety and depression. Yeah. So that oh. stuff just kills her. And that's yeah. just from that. Like visibly, if you looked at my sister and she wasn't moving and wasn't breathless, you wouldn't know yeah, that no. she had cystic fibrosis. Mm. So. And how is that not like recognised? So they yeah. don't get any support from the government at all? Yeah. No, um, she can't She can't get any um, disabled parking disabled permits parking. or anything. So NJS? She's looking into it. But it's, 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 yeah, no. Honestly, how is this? My sister woke up on her 18th birthday and they took her NDIS funding. And mum's calling them up like, what's happened? Like, oh, well, you know, oh, she's 18 now. She has to sort that out herself and whatever. And mum's like, sorry, she didn't wake up and not be Down syndrome. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they're just actually that. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Oh. But like, and it should just be a case by case thing. Like, Somebody should, like, yeah. say for your sister, I, I don't know. see how that's... That's too simple. Yeah. It's too, too simple. <laughs> it's too too easy. simple. Give Way her... Too yeah. easy. Yeah. 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 Mm. So, yeah, I understand what you're saying. It makes it a little bit easier that you can visibly yeah. see the Down syndrome yeah. and people can give it the respect it needs. Yeah. That's so sad, though, as well, because it's like... 
you have to like fully label it. Like people just can't mind their own business and be respectful. Like yeah, it's like no, unless you look disabled, we're not. We're going to give you dirty looks. Like exactly, yeah. I know people have too much time on their yeah, hands. Yeah, <laughs> I feel sorry for them. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of NDIS. Does, so henna has it yeah yeah, though? yeah, yeah good that was yeah. sorted out excellent yeah. <laughs> um how big a relief was that for you and your family and the opportunities and resources that that opened up for you yeah that was a big thing we didn't really i mean it came in 2017 i think maybe yeah i think about I think then. four years yeah. ago or something so growing up it was like it was obviously nothing but i guess we didn't really think we needed it like we were just all a family and we all did the same things but it kind of came at a really good time for her because she was finishing, like, getting to the end of school and there were things that, you know, like usually a 17-year-old has their licence and they can start driving and they do all their stuff. But then when mum's got to work or my little sister can't drive, we've moved out of home, like, who's going to take Hannah to all these appointments or, or social things or, you know, swimming on a Saturday, like, she still needs assistance all the time. She can't be left on her own. So, yeah, it was a massive relief and just I think having those that funding there to support her to do different things and to whether it's seeing different as OT or whether it's to go to those social outings and things like that with other people that are in the same boat um, is really important. Absolutely. Does your mum um, access any respite services with Hannah? Um, not like... Not like any of the big ones that are out there, I don't think. It's more so just like little ones that she's made like connections with over the years and um, little groups that she wants to be a part of or um, swimming groups or like wellness groups or things like that, like just to keep fit and have fun. And I think she's with um, she with at the moment Team Lemonade. And have you heard of them? I've heard of them. But yeah. yeah. They're down like in Kingscliff, so when the border stuff happened, that was a bit – no go but now they're like they're like a bit of both and they just like do like work experience stuff and like go and do fun stuff and go to like she was sailing the other week and then she's at the farm every thursday now and i'm like your life is sick yeah. <laughs> it's like, sweet yeah. it's like yeah whatever yeah. <laughs> how would you say that having assist with down syndrome shaped your life it's a very big question yeah um <laughs> i guess having her in a, a part of my life for nearly 20 years now um pretty much my whole life has definitely shaped me to who i am and i'm um, a better person for that my whole family is and our friends are um i think she's just taught me how to be more patient and to be more kind and just like i said see the small things that are so important and um yeah, she's just made us all a better better person. Like, I don't know. There's no way. There's not nothing in particular that she's done. It's just her being her, and us just loving her so much. Like, she gets annoyed. She's like, oh, "Stop it! You're annoying." I'll still give her a kiss, and she wipes it off. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. she's still that young kid at heart. Like, we're still. It's like we'll always just have a kid in the family, even though we're all getting older. It's like. Hannah, did you miss me? And like, we're like, we would never say this to our 19 year old this time. <laughs> she wasn't uh, Down syndrome. So I think it's just always, it keeps us all young and it keeps us all um, very appreciative. A little bit of what we spoke about earlier as well about how it's sort of helped you be more accepting of other people growing yeah, up, I think, as well. Definitely, yeah. definitely. And just controlling what you can control. Like, yeah. We know there's no cure or <laughs> there's nothing like, that's just, we know that that's going to be Hannah. Um, forever but it's just seeing that for what it is and living life with her as best as we can that's one of the best life lessons like even apart from its um relation to disabilities but just focusing on what you can control Mm. i used to get so caught up on other people's actions and opinions and it used to do my head in on too much yeah at the end of the day like when you just sit back and realize like there's some things I can't change and your perception and your reaction is all that you can change. It's such a game changer for you. A hundred percent. And that's just a massive mindset thing. And it's like, you can see like, like glass half full or glass half empty kind of thing. And the way, when you start changing that, 
um, because life's going to happen no matter what. Like you've just got to take it for what it is. So, yeah, it's in anything. It's not just in this. It's like everything we do. So yeah. Yeah. control what you can control. Tell us about your work promoting mental health awareness for people with disabilities. Yeah, so I've just um, moved more into – I've always been really passionate in the um, disability space from henna and just thinking how is this even a job like. Like I've obviously been doing stuff with henna my whole life and then now to be able to do that um, for work is really special to me and um, two of my main roles – um, is one at Stellar Experiences where um, we have social outings for young adults with disabilities and we just go out and have fun and do things that we all love to do but just get everyone together and, and do it and um, I love that so much. And then um, the other one is um, for the Wellbeing Code where we run our mental health and wellbeing workshops not only for like different work organisations and whatnot, but um, also for NDIS participants. And just that's actually been something that's been really eye-opening for me. I've always been like, get straight in there, let's hang out, have fun, like, you know, that real hands-on stuff. But then getting into more the wellbeing space and just seeing how, you know, giving these people like a voice and like, just letting them know they're heard and like whether it's the smallest little thing about what they've achieved that week or what they've overcome in their life, like just giving them that platform to like speak and be proud of what they've achieved to be there um, and see their progression, say like over like a six-week block is so rewarding and makes me really realise that I'm really passionate about this space and um, how important it is for not just them to be doing mental health um, and well-being like that type of space, but all of us, like, that's – we're there for them, but there's just not enough people doing it, like, yeah. practising it or preaching it or talking about it. Which is funny because gyms are so popular these days and everyone's so worried about their exactly. physical health. But, yeah, yeah, what's going on upstairs is so It's so, so much, more, much important. more important. 100%, like you said, like – you go to the gym, every, whether you go and do exercise every day, which is so important, don't get me wrong. I yeah. love exercise. You go for a walk, you go for a swim, you go and do whatever it is, your yoga, Pilates, sign up at, to a gym class. Like you do all of that and then what are you doing for your mental health? Like, yeah. We just – we talk about it. I feel like we talk about it and we do Are You OK Day and we do mental health awareness, but it's like what's that next step? Like what? how do we actually – discuss it and get better at building our own resilience and mental yeah. health. Yeah, agreed. Making Turning that talk into action, I think. Yeah. Are You OK Day is an amazing initiative. Um, it is. initiative, yeah. But I feel like sometimes, it's especially kind of, social media doesn't help, it becomes oh. a little bit glamorised one day a year to talk about, which is good because it raises awareness. But as a society, I think we definitely need to get better at Making that an everyday thing, not yeah, just not just once, once a, year. a year. Like, oh, are you okay? Yeah, yeah. I want are you okay? Like, yeah. I'm gonna tell you now, are they? Yeah, that was one of those things. I reckon it was might have been last year, year before. Maybe I was guilty of that. Or put up something that, yeah, are you okay? And I think I saw someone else post something about like, oh, it's not just one day a year. Yeah, it happens, and I, it's just something that never clicked to me before. You know, like mm. I was like, oh, are you okay? Day, that's good. Ask everyone, but you know, it's the other days you got to realize that. That's when people aren't getting asked, are you okay? Yeah, and that's exactly. when you really... Is, that's like, that's are you okay important. day is like the best day because everyone's like, all right, yeah. I'm ready for it. Like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's the other times when people aren't getting asked that need, yeah. need to be reached out to. And it's not only, are you okay? It's like, that's quite confronting. Like, you've, it's how else can we divert this or what, what can I do to make them feel comfortable and trust me that they can open up to me and talk to me? So it's just like even if it's just inviting someone for a coffee or over for dinner or go for a walk or whatever it is, like just being there for someone. It's not like texting them, are you okay? Like, yeah, yeah. That's you know? it. It's that gap between asking if someone's okay and even when you're checking in with yourself and if they say they're not okay or you realise that you're not okay, that gap between there and actioning, okay, yeah. well, what do we do from here to Like, yeah, well, now we know. They've better. said no. they said they're not okay, but what do we actually do now? We've only been asked to... Ask. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's and 
Totally. Not only then like that band aid, okay, what can we do to help you or me feel better? Then what steps can we put in place to maintain that? Yeah. Sense exactly. of well being. I think that's good as well because like I'm I'm lucky I'm someone that hasn't struggled with mental health, so I find it not difficult to reach out to someone. But then if someone did come to me and say, you know, I'm struggling with my mental health. I don't know what to do, to, what to say to them to fix them or anything. Like, I don't, because I haven't been through that to know this is what helped me or anything. So, yeah. something like that, more yeah. of a. Yeah, you would something. have so much resilience and like yeah. life experience, though, that, and you've been through so much, obviously, that people would just expect you to know, but you've just built it up without even knowing. So, it's yeah. like, yeah, nothing to it. Yeah, that's sweet. <laughs> <laughs> um, growing up with Hannah, that obviously push you into the path of working and um, volunteering in these areas? Yeah, definitely. It's been something that I've always, like I said, been really passionate about. And um, I didn't really ever know what I wanted to do when I was growing up. And I did different studying and courses and um, uni and whatever. But, um, yeah, this has been something that that I've always done and I've always kind of had, whether it's been alongside footy or... Um, with that stellar stuff with the social outings, I've just always kind of had that on the side because it's just really important to me. And, um, yeah, Hannah's obviously been a big part of that because I just bring Hannah along and I'm like, sweet, this is my sister. And that's like my intro into everything kind <laughs> of. And I think I can just really relate to the importance of having those different social outings and um, being involved in teams and communities because it means so much to us and our family that Hannah has a space like that. So I feel like I can relate to parents and sisters and brothers and families of people with disabilities um, and know how much they appreciate it as well. And that I love that. Like I'm like, yes, yeah. I yeah. love it too. So it's all good. Like I imagine that would be a massive comfort for them and their families to know that, you know, the person that's running it or is involved with it isn't just some ring in that just wants to come just do it. For, that's it's great. If anyone wants to do yeah. it, that's great. But just having that comfort of knowing that you have the lived experience of a sibling with a disability and doing it for the right reasons and you sort of know what you're doing. I imagine yeah. Yeah, if you come. No, it's definitely, I mean, you can have every, um, what is it, like a certificate or degree on, yeah. in the yeah. book, but that, that experience and that empathy and um, just what you learn from growing up with that, like that is something – no degree can ever buy and which is well, being around yeah. that yeah which we talked about with jake parker whose mum had motor neuron disease yeah. and he become her full-time care and yeah he he talked about it made him he's a disability support worker now after yeah. um she passed away and 100 percent he knows what he wanted mm. when he was away how he wanted people to yeah. look after his mum so he uh employs yeah, that into so his work special. as well yeah. It is. It really is. And it's like those people, if, if you're passionate about it and you want to be there, like you're going to make a difference no matter what you're doing because there are people watching you and like for Jake, like that is something that he'll carry with him forever and knowing that he's making such a difference in their lives and that it's kind of carrying his mum's legacy with him as well, I think is so special. and Yeah. Yeah. A very special thing. What are you most hoping that uh, through people like yourself and your advocacy changes about the perception of disabilities in the future? I hope that it's not such a um, veto topic that we, we can just kind of be really open about it and um, it's not like we have to say disability or we have to even acknowledge it. It can just be like people are just much more aware and accepting, I think. Um you know, when we rock up in a big bus and we're going hiking or whatever it is and, you know, I hope that everyone can just feel comfortable enough to come up and say hello and chat to us and um, just make them feel special and just actually, you know what, sometimes when you see people that treat people better because they've got a disability, like say Down syndrome or whatever, um, you know, I feel like they'd just be nice and it's like you can be that nice to everyone. You don't just have yeah, to like yeah. – do you know what I mean? That's it's good like point. Yeah. you see it like there's so – I'm going off on a tangent again, but there's so many different ranges of how people are going to act and around. But it's like 
you can be kind to them. So if you're not kind, be kind. And if you're kind to them, you can be kind to everyone. So yeah. like, it's just like a way of living, like just be accepting and kind to everyone. I just don't see how it's yeah. so hard. Like you, don't, we don't know, like your sister, you don't know what, we don't know what she's going through or what she's been through. There would be so many people like her that are also going through something like that. So why would we ever waste our energy being like making those remarks or looks, yeah. or, you know, like exactly. you just don't know. Like they've obviously got something going on that they're You're not happy with. So often people go out of their way to be extra nice yeah. to people with a disability. Yeah. yeah. Why can't you be like that to everyone? Just, yeah, you don't even have to go out. You don't even have to go out, out of your way. Just don't be mean. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like yeah. just, yeah, it's, it makes you feel so much better being a nice person or complimenting someone or doing something, a nice gesture for someone. Yeah. I just think if we all did that, like, whoa, the world would be so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> On that, when people come up, do you ever find that they can be over the top nice to a point of it's almost condescending? Yeah, 100%. Because that's like... where I think needs education is. <laughs> I've been out with the guys from um, Strides that I'm good mates with now. Yeah. And people come and be like, oh, it's so good of you. I'm like, yeah. what? Oh, so good yeah. of you? What do you mean? I'm getting pissed with my mate. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Yeah. But know, in, they think that like you can't speak. Or, yeah. Or, yeah. Or, and that's, yeah. yeah it's, in their it's mind, they think they're being really nice. I know. The, the big message is it's not to treat come up and treat them overly, overly nice, nice and different. I know. Treat them exactly the same. Just, just treat them. Hey, mate, how's yeah. it going? If they don't reply, sweet. Like, yeah, exactly. They can't talk. That's all right. Like, I, yeah. Yeah. Just, I bite my tongue so much and people say to me, oh, it's so good to see you out and about or something. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. 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 Have you seen classic. my tan? Of course I get out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, Thank that you. That is absolutely so it. funny. Oh. We love... Oh. Um, I remember we started learning actually sign language for Hannah. Like we were growing up and we just got told that maybe she doesn't, won't speak. So we started learning sign language. And so people would be doing all this sign language to Hannah and she's like, what are you doing? You're weird. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? And like people still would like would do it. She's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Like you just have to kind of get that gauge. And I guess that's hard but like if you don't know anyone or if you haven't been exposed to that. But it's just – being more accepting and, and just aware, more, I think. More yeah. education around it. Hope more that's education. Yeah. And that's more it. movies. More like how yeah. good was it seen? Um, race Like a Girl with – Ride Like a Girl with Stevie Payne and oh, Michelle Payne. Yeah. And Michelle's little brother, Stevie, had um, Down syndrome and he was like the – it's like what a, he? I like don't a, know what his role was, but he, he was would walk there. the horse yeah. out, and he actually acted in the movie, yeah. like the real life. Apparently, scene. he was loving himself sick yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah. loving sick, and I love that. And it's like the, even just the topic and like the conversations that that would spark just from him being in that movie. Yeah. Um, mm. And people were like, "How cool is that?" It's like, yeah, he can do that. Like, it's something I think there's a big push for now. Apparently, is especially in movies and things, yeah, rather than getting um, like say able-bodied people to play someone in a wheelchair. They want right. real life yeah. people Ooh, in wheelchairs to play. Could be them. your new uh, career. Any, 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 <laughs> Did uh, you call him? If there's Spielberg, Anyone out there Spielberg's who's... listening, I'm, I'm available. <laughs> so true. Like, yeah. why not? Yeah. You're only yeah. going to do things that are actually relevant, not like. Actually, did the son in Breaking Bad, does he actually have CP? Because yeah, yeah, that does. was one of the things that I saw that really kick started that movement. Yeah. Rather yeah. than getting an able bodied person to play someone with CP, how much better can someone with CP <laughs> play <laughs> someone with CP? Like, wow, it's so true. No brainer. Yeah. <laughs> He's a good actor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that'd be awesome, though. Just to have it like in your regular movies, like just a little part that. Like Glee, having little Becky. Yeah. Tan yeah. syndrome. Love that. As sad as it is, but like what easy way to educate the next generation and through what you can know 90% of them are going to be seeing through bloody Hollywood. But Exactly. Actually, what was that other one? Sorry, I love them. Um, <laughs> Atypical. Yeah. Oh, that was good. Oh, and it was like good to see the family and their side of it and like his thoughts. And it was like so true. Like that's everything. Yeah. Even shows like that love on the spectrum. Yeah. And that oh gave me God. so much more oh, understanding. Love yeah, me too. How we, good is that show? So yeah. good. Yeah. There's um, one guy from Sydney, Stella, um, Ronan, and he was on love on the spectrum. And it was like, obviously like knowing him and seeing him and then watching him on there. I'm like, that is a hundred percent to the T. Like, <laughs> that's Ronan. Um, and I think that, like, people loved that show. Like, yeah, yeah. the comments on that were, like, the feedback was awesome. That, yeah. Like, why are we putting on, 
all these other stupid shows that create so much drama and there's just mind numbing cell loss. Yeah. Like yeah. they're just shocking. Keeping yeah. up the Kardashians. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, yeah. I like, not say that. You know, like Love Island or whatever <laughs> yeah. it is. Married at first, Married at first sight. sight. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Hate that show. yeah. And like you see a love on the spectrum, it's just makes your heart so happy. It's so and it's, it, yeah. it's such mindless education, but because yeah. you're learning so much and gaining so much understanding and perspective, but you're being entertained at the same time. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> like then, it is a laugh. It's hilarious. I love it. Yeah. Parts I, of it I always felt guilty about laughing, but then I was no. like, yeah, but then I was like, oh no, that they're supposed to be laughing at him as well. If it was my mate that was doing that, I'd be laughing. So I was like, yeah. A hundred percent. No, yeah. that's the yeah. best part about it. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, no, this is like. It's the it's just the best. Yeah. I love that it's show. Such a good I show. hope it comes on more. It was like on ABC iView or something, but yeah. I hope it's like being prime time yeah. on Channel Nine, you know? That'd yeah. be 30, awesome. 730 Channel Nine. Yeah. Yeah, get the kids watching that. And it's like people could even pick up like, Oh, I've actually met someone kinda like that and then yeah. it kind of puts into perspective how they're thinking or um what they've been through. So yeah, yeah, hundred sure. percent. What's been the biggest life lesson? from having a sister with Down syndrome and all your work in the disability sector, what do you think is the biggest life lesson that it's given you? Biggest life lesson? I probably should have uh, sorted this question out. <laughs> here. I don't know. I think it's just more so what you learn along the way and the person it makes you. Like We touch on a lot of things along yeah, the way that I already yeah. go into touch it. On yeah. a fair bit of it, but... Just be kind, honestly. Like, be kind. Be accepting of everyone. Just be accepting yeah. and be kind. It sounds so cliche and stupid, but simple. It's so simple. And that's just how easy it can be. Like, it is easy, but because a lot of the things in life that we take for granted that Hannah would find difficult, one thing that you're telling us she doesn't find difficult is to be kind. So. Yeah. What's that say? It's one of the easiest things you can do. So exactly, it doesn't make sense that so many of us find it so dif- difficult. Yeah, hundred yep. percent. Awesome. Thanks for coming on, Millie. No worries. Thank you so much for having me. I've really enjoyed it, and yeah. I've loved this different aspect of uh, disability and um, this podcast. So thank you very much for having me. No thank worries. you. Thank you. Our next guest on the show will be Ryan Boyd. This will be a different perspective as Ryan is actually the individual uh, affected by the disability in his family. Although his father also has a spinal cord injury, Ryan suffered a C4 spinal cord injury in 2015 while riding motocross. Um, Ryan's got the unique perspective of first having dealt with his dad's disability, watching his best friend sustain a spinal cord injury riding motorbikes and then sustaining one himself. With Ryan's perspective being too good not to share, his family uh, didn't feel comfortable coming on the show and talking, so Ryan's going to step up and tell their story himself. Really looking forward to getting Ryan on on our next episode and having a chat to him. That'll, like Jack said, be a very unique perspective. And um, guys, Beyond Blue have given us a green light to offer their support. If any of our podcasts do bring up negative emotions and you need support, please contact Beyond Blue on 1300 double two four six three six or go online to beyondblue.org.au and follow the website to their online chat check in on each other and remember it ain't weak to speak have a look for us on social media guys we have facebook and instagram pages you can look for the unaffected podcast on facebook or the unaffected underscore podcast on instagram where you'll also find the links in our bio to our youtube and tiktok channels you can also reach us via email on theunaffectedpod at gmail.com. Reach out to us via our DMs or emails and hit us up with any feedback or questions you'd like us to ask any past or upcoming guests um, and spread some awareness about us, guys. We're really trying to spread a, a positive perspective and create awareness through a bit of education um, for p- people with disabilities. So help us out. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. I hope to hope you come back and listen to the next one with Ryan. Thank you.